OK, so let's say I've got a square grid, OK? And here are two squares ready for me to use. So it's like having a big bit of paper, OK? So let's say when I shade in one of these squares, we're going to say that this has area 1, OK? So I'm starting off with 1. So there's 1. Now, if I then shaded in half of this square, okay, then I would be adding on one half. Okay, so I've now got one and a half in area. If I then shade in half of what I've got left, okay, then that would be a quarter. If that's a half, that's half of a half, so a quarter. So that's a quarter. Shade that in. And then if I have what's left, that will be an eighth. Okay. And then if I have what's left, that will be a sixteenth. And then have what's left, I'd have a one over thirty two. Okay. And if I keep on adding on a half of what's left, now, if I keep doing it, I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to 2. But because I'm adding on smaller and smaller pieces each time and just shading in half of the area that's left, I'm never actually going to reach 2. But, you know, in, in practical terms, I can never reach to, but I can get as close as you want to it, and I'll never start shading in the next square along. So what I can say is that adding up this infinite uh, series must be equal to 2. Although, you know, it, it's difficult to kind of get that he your head around the fact that I'm adding up an infinite number of things and I'm getting a finite value. But the concept you've got to think of, well, is that I've kind of got this 2 as this upper limit, right? And I can keep on adding on closer and closer bits continually adding on smaller and smaller and smaller bits and getting closer and closer and closer to 2. Now, I'm never going to reach it, right? I'm never going to actually physically reach 2, but 2 is the marker, if you will, right, saying that you can get as close as you like to this number. You know, forget 1.99, I can go further than that. Forget 1.9999, I can go further than that. But I can get as close as I like to 2 without ever quite reaching it. So 2 is like your upper limit. So we say that this sum to infinity is equal to 2. Now this is a geometric series. I'm not just adding a bunch of disparate pieces together. So this is a geometric series that has a first term and a common ratio because we've got the first term 1 and we've got a common ratio where we're multiplying by a half each time. So you could say that the sum of 1 times a half, so a times r to the n minus 1 from n is 1 up to infinity is equal to 2. OK, now, wouldn't it be nice if we were able to say, wait, well, I've got um, a series here. Does it have a sum to infinity? And what is it? So that's really what we want. Now, what made sure that this was going to have a sum to infinity? OK, that's something that we've got to think about, because... What I'm adding on here, so 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, would it make sense if I had 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16? 
Okay, will this have a sum to infinity? Will there be a value beyond which I can't get any further? Well, no, right? I'm going to keep on adding on larger and larger amounts. So this geometric series does not have a sum to infinity because I'm adding on larger and larger and larger pieces. So it's only going to work if we're adding on smaller and smaller pieces. Okay? And so the sum to infinity will only work... Oh, if I can spell it. There we are. The sum to infinity is only going to work if that value of r, the common ratio, is less than 1. Now, we also know that, because otherwise the values between will just get larger and larger and larger, won't they? Right? So r's got to be less than 1. But we can go further than that, because if you are having, um, let's say we had 1 take away a half plus a quarter, take away an eighth, plus a sixteenth, take away one over 32. The pieces that I'm adding on subtracting each time are getting smaller, OK? And we can envisage that this series, you know, isn't going to get larger than a certain value. And this will home in on a sum to infinity, OK? We don't know quite what that is, necessarily, right? But we can say that it would do. So that means that if my r was also multiplying by minus a half each time, my common ratio was negative minus a half, we would also have a sum to infinity. Not quite sure what it is. OK. But it makes sense. Now, if r was less than minus 1, then clearly we would have 1 take 2 plus 4 take 8 plus 16. That doesn't make sense either, OK, to have a sum to infinity. So, and if r is 1 or minus 1, then I can't have just 1 uh, plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. That's not going to have a sum to infinity either. So r must be between minus 1 and 1. And we write that as the modulus of r being less than 1. These two bits of information are synonymous. Okay? They mean precisely the same thing. The modulus sign here, if you haven't met it before, means the absolute value of r. So that means that... If r was minus a half, then the modulus of minus a half is a half. OK? So it's saying that the absolute value, kind of like the size of r, must be less than 1. So, as I said, we want to make sure that we have some kind of way of finding the sum to infinity. Now, we have a way of finding the sum to n terms, OK, for a geometric series that look like this. So A, um, I'm going to use this version here. What's the round this way? OK. So we have A times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. Remember, you could have it as a R to the n minus 1 over R minus 1. OK, same thing. Now, if r is between minus 1 and 1, as n gets larger, OK, so as n tends to infinity and gets larger and larger and larger and larger, r to the n gets smaller and smaller and smaller, OK? If you think about what a half is, right, a half squared is a quarter, cubed is an eighth, to the four is a sixteenth, to the five is a one over thirty-two, right? The fractions are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So by the time you get to like, to the hundred, 
to the thousand, to the million, that fraction is so small that it makes pretty much no difference. Okay, so this value will go towards zero. So as r modulus of r is less than one. Okay. So s infinity, as we write it, okay, for the sum to infinity, will just be a one minus. Well, this thing has gone to zero over 1 minus r. And so 1 minus 0 is just 1. So we could rewrite that as just a over 1 minus r. And this is the formula for summing to infinity. OK? It's a really basic formula for something that is so powerful and so meaningful, right, that we can add an infinite number of things together and we get a finite value. And it is given by this formula here. So for our previous example where we had one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, you know, diagrammatically we had it adding up to two. So this has a sum to infinity where the first term is one, the common ratio is a half, so 1 over 1 take away half, 1 divided by a half is 2, as we saw. OK? Now, we also had that one where we had 1 take away a half plus a quarter take away an eighth. Now, if the common ratio was uh, minus a half, we've got 1 take away minus a half, so 1 plus a half. So that's 1 over three halves, and so this would add up to two-thirds. And that would be its sum to infinity, OK? So this is how sum to sums to infinity works. You must remember that, R, that this only exists and only works when r is between minus 1 and 1. OK, that was the whole restriction on allow us, allowing us to go from that summation to that one. OK, it won't work without that.